Okay, uh, what, we, what we talked about in an earlier video is finding the volume by slicing and using cross sections. And what we discovered was that it's going to be necessary to get a formula for the area of a cross section. It will be some shape, hopefully a familiar shape, the cross section will be. And we'll have to find the area of that cross section. It might uh, may depend on x, or sometimes if it's perpendicular to the y-axis, it'll, it'll depend on y. And, and so there'll be some basic shapes that we'll need to be able to know the area of based on uh, some, you know, the, a formula for it. And, we, you know, it's a semicircle, a uh, square, or an equilateral triangle. So the purpose of this video is to, to go through those formulas. And what will end up happening is, for this, you know, for this particular one, we have the diameter here lies along the, the base of the solid or or one side of the equilateral triangle lies along the base of the solid or a side of the square um, somehow is involved with the solid and so we'll have some some formula based on the side length uh, s and we'll have a we'll be able to calculate the formula of the area and then that'll then be used to calculate the volume of the three-dimensional shape so the purpose of this video is to go through the area of basic shapes based on some side length S. So first up is a square, and that's just going to be S squared for the area. Next up is a semicircle, where the diameter is, is S, like we had seen in the picture. Well, to get the area of, of such a shape, we're going to need the radius, and, and so the radius is half of the diameter. But this isn't a full circle, this is only half of a circle. And so the area is going to be half of pi r squared. And we take and square the s and square the 2. And we'll have pi over 2 times um, s squared over 4. Altogether, we can simplify it by saying that it's pi over 8 times s squared. In this particular situation, where the diameter lies along the base perpendicular to the x-axis, or maybe the y-axis, uh, we have to come up with some formula for S, and then we can then integrate that formula. And so in each of these, our job is to come up with just the basic formulas for the area of a, of a, a, a simple shape. Next up, we'll look at an isosceles right triangle, where the, the legs ha have length S. And this is just half of that square that we had saw on the last slide. Um, you know, the base and height are both s, so one half of s squared is the area. And sometimes they, they make it more difficult, where instead of having this shape come um, out, of the, uh, out of the base, they have a different shape. When they take this shape, basically, and they turn it on its uh, side, where they have the diameter bs. I'm sorry, not the uh, diameter, the hypotenuse bs. And so in that case, then, it's going to be necessary to find the area... Of, of this isosceles right triangle and and so what we need is to know the base and the height and, and they're the same you know this is this is an isosceles right triangle and this is our 45 45 90 and let's just say that maybe we don't remember the relation between the sides in a 45 45 90 we can just use Pythagorean theorem to, to get it let's just call them X for now and use the fact that leg squared plus leg squared is hypotenuse squared and then combine the two um, x squares that are on the right, uh, left hand side divide by 2 and then take a square root so we know what x is now and x is representative of the base and the height and so then we can find the area by taking one half the base times the height and when we have these two root twos multiplied together that gives us a 2 and so all together we're looking at S and S multiplied together in numerator, 2 and 2 multiplied together in denominator. The area is going to be one-fourth of S squared. Okay. When the hypotenuse has length S. Okay, and then finally let's look at an equilateral triangle. Okay. An equilateral triangle that has side length S. So, um, we need the base and the height. The base is definitely S. We're going to need the height. And so, we have to remember what happens with an equilateral triangle. Uh, all the angles are 60 degrees. And, and then when you drop the perpendicular down um, to get the altitude, it bisects the sides. 
and it'll bisect the angles too. So, so we have S over 2 for the, uh, the two parts of the base here. Each angle is 60, and this top angle, which is 60, gets split in half, 30 and 30. Then we have a familiar 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Okay, sorry the animation was out of order here, but in the standard 30, 60, 90 right triangle, instead of going through the whole Pythagorean theorem of, like we did on the last slide, we'll just um, go through relationship here that um, what's opposite the 30 is called X. You get double that to get the hypotenuse, and then you take that X and multiply it by root 3 to get what's opposite the 60. And so for us, this value of X, what's opposite the, the 30 is S over 2. So then that makes the altitude what's opposite the 60 here, S over 2 times the root of 3. And so we'll have the area formula then where the base is S over, uh, actually the entire base is S, and the altitude is, is S over 2 root 3. So the formula, 1 half the base times the height, will end up as... Um, S times S times a root 3 in the numerator and then a 4 in the denominator so the formula probably best written as root 3 over 4 times S squared that'll be the area of an equilateral triangle which has side length S okay so those are our formulas there's more I mean but that's enough for now and here's a summary page when you have a square it's gonna be S squared when you have a, a, a semicircle where the diameter is s, there's going to be pi over 8 s squared. Isosceles right triangle is half of s squared. Isosceles right triangle where the where the hypotenuse is s, that's a fourth of s squared. And then finally, an equilateral triangle, that'll be root 3 over 4 s squared. Okay, and this will help us once we go and calculate uh, volume using cross sections.